Burhowski here coming to you live today. Hey, I just wanted to um, come to you. I, you know, I keep saying that I'm going to come to you on Fridays, but um, I've had a change in schedule here the last couple of weeks um, with hubby and some health issues and things like that. And so my Fridays haven't been working out. So you know what? I think I'm going to change it Saturdays. I mean, Saturdays to Sunday. I, <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> okay. To Sundays. That way I can actually um, come out here and do some, do some lives for you guys and be consistent about it. Cause that's really what I'm trying to do is be consistent as I do these live videos. So I wanted to come to you today about over exercising and five things that it's going to do to harm your body. Now I know this is kind of strange about exercise, but, um, I am an exercise lover. Okay. You may not have known that about me, but I am, I love exercise. And the reason why I love it is because it's my stress reliever. It actually relieves stress. It doesn't stress me out, but it actually relieves stress. Or so I thought before um, my early onset uh, menopause journey. Okay. So I, I have done like, you name it. I've done all the exercises. Okay. Um, I did step for a while. I don't know if you guys remember the step, man, I was so into that. Um, and then we did step with weights and then I did, I did a couple of gym memberships. I actually joined a couple of um, groups in the gym, uh, worked out with them, you know, power walking, uh, all that kind of stuff. Now, when I started to lose uh, the weight that I had gained in menopause, I gained about 60 pounds during menopause. And I, I about five years ago, I, I lost the 68 pounds, 28 inches. Um, and I did that with a program, okay? There was a specific program that I used for women who were actually um, going through the menopausal journey. Okay, so I will tell you that. I disclose it up to you front. I didn't do it on my own. I actually used a program. It was very effective. Now, I have gained back 20 pounds. I have to be very honest about that. And the reason why that has happened is, is just because of life changes, some more hormonal shifts, and I really haven't been paying attention to what I'm totally eating, mostly what I'm, most of what I'm eating, but not all of what I'm eating. So I just have to be real about that. Um, I am getting back on program. Um, I will get this uh, 20 pounds off because it does make me feel really bad. And, um, and I, and I can't get into my clothes, but well, I can get into some of them. And I can't get into the other ones. So I know you know how that feels too about getting into your clothes. So hey, let's talk about exercise though. Okay. So um, I love kettlebells. I think those are awesome to do. I love Pio. I love yoga and I love Pilates at this point. And that's really that and walking. And I do power walking, not just walking. Those are really the exercises that I have dialed down to. Uh, prior to that, I was actually doing um, anywhere from five to six, sometimes seven days a week. Um, and I would do anywhere from a half hour to 45 minutes. Uh, one day would be very intense. One day would be cardio, intense, cardio, intense, cardio. Uh, you see how that works out. And then what I found was, is that as I started doing this program, I was like, wow, uh, the exercise got dialed the world down. And I was thinking, mm, do I want to do that? Because, you know, I'm like, I'm like really into it. But guess what was happening though, okay, is what I was doing was over exercising, which you can actually do, especially when you have hormonal shifts going on. Over exercising actually creates more stress and cortisol, which and again produces more of the visceral fat, which is the fat around the the abdominal area for women and for men. This is detrimental. It is not good for you. It's the worst kind of fat that you can possibly have. So you think I'm reducing calories. I'm exercising more and yet I'm not losing any weight and I seem to be gaining or I seem to be maintaining, but I'm getting, I'm getting the, the muffin top thing going on. Okay. That is because you are producing actually more stress hormones and cortisol. Okay. One of the things this is going is, is the adrenal glands. And those are two tiny triangular um, glands that sit on top of your kidneys. And these two glands produce what is called the stress hormones, which are called the adrenaline and the cortisol. All right. Adrenaline is a lifesaver. That's your fight or flight. And we need that. Okay. You need a little bit of stress in your life. Just a little bit though. Not a whole bunch of stress. Not a whole bunch of chaos going on on a, on a total constant basis either. Okay. So you need to have that fight or flight because that's good. Because if you don't have the fight or flight, you know, <laughs> when the situation does happen, you need to be able to go, ah, gotta go. Okay. Um, and that can lead you to have that super human strength too. The ability to make the quick decisions and then provide the short burst of energy. All right. Cortisol is what helps mobilize or um, yeah, mobilize the stored um, glycogen. 
um, which can be converted in the liver to the to the glucose so that you have a boost of readily available fuel. It also increases your mental alertness and your ability to focus and remember things for the short term. Now, what happens though when you're doing a lot of over-exercising is actually the opposite with the cortisol, okay? It actually can cause you to have um, uh, mental fogginess, okay? So some of the things that, that can happen when you start doing your exercise is just this, is we can have number one, weight gain instead of weight loss. And I know that sounds strange, but if you are over exercising and you're not, or you're maintaining, or you're actually seeing a, um, a gain, that's the reason why that's happening is because you are over exercising. Um, it can lower the libido, okay? So if you don't feel like your sexual drive is what it used to be, it's probably because you might be over exercising. Um, mood swings, okay? Because you are doing the fight or flight and the cortisol, which is overproducing. And so it can create mood swings and they can be um, really bad. Okay, so we want to look at that. Hot flashes. I know you're thinking, I'm exercising and I'm eating right and everything. And that's to reduce the hot flashes. But guess what? It actually increases the hot flashes. Um, night sweats as well. Um, I never experienced night sweats, but I did experience the hot flashes. They're not fun. I call them power surges. They either stop, start here and go all the way down or they start down there and they go all the way up. They can last anywhere from a minute to five or 10. They're just awful. You can sweat through your clothes. Ugh, it's just, yeah, nothing, nothing. Okay. And then again, you can be burning muscle and not the fat, which is really what we don't want to be doing, okay? We want to make sure, especially if you're an early onset menopause survivor, okay, you need to make sure you're protecting those bones. It's really, really important. I already have some bone loss in L1, 2, 3, and 4, and a little bit in my right hip at this point at age 55. And the reason for that is, is because most women aren't going through menopause until their late 40s or very early 50, all right? That's when you're natural process is supposed to start. Well, mine didn't start then, it started at age 36, okay? So I'm already being depleted of my of my bone density there. So I have to be extra vigilant, and for those of you who are early onset survivors, or if you had early onset menopause, or even in your early 40s, you need to be extra vigilant of your bones, okay? You need to make sure that you are getting bone densities. You need to make sure your OBGYN knows that you are a high risk. Insurance will cover that if you are a high risk. Um, so I've already had four, four bone densities already done, um, and mine have been progressively not getting worse, okay? And the reason for that is, is because I follow a really good regimen with that diet and exercise that we talked about, the nutrition. I said diet, didn't I? Let me not do that again, okay? With the nutrition, because I don't like diets because we don't just diet, okay? We do a lifestyle plan here um, going on there. So this is some of the things that can happen when you over-exercise, okay? These are just some of the things that can happen. Um, I can actually tell you, I remember uh, actually working out one time, I would think I was doing kettlebells, and I was like physically, like physically, okay? done and I didn't even realize it and I'm you know I'm exercising I'm swinging those things next thing you know I'm I'm puking in the in the trash can okay yep so that kind of signaled me right there that wow that's probably not good okay you shouldn't be throwing up when you're working out and and if you're getting to that point where you know the exercise becomes just obsessive then you need to take a step back Okay, it's really important that you take a step back and take a look at the type of exercise that you're doing. Now, I always tell everyone too that you need to make sure you're exercising to an exercise that you love. Okay, there's nothing worse than exercising and you hate what you're doing. <laughs> I went to some classes, you know, that I would go to and I would think to myself, why would you want to do this class? Okay, this is totally not for me. I don't, I don't like it. There's nothing about it that's fun. So I didn't do this anymore. So when you do do your exercise, you need to make sure you like it. Okay, you enjoy it. It's something that you really like doing. Um, I will tell you that I do like Beachbody. I don't promote Beachbody, um, but I do like their their body on demand, and I do have that. Um, for a really good, simple program, um, the 21 Day Fix and the 21 Day Fix Extreme are really good starting points, okay? Those are some really good starting points. I like them a lot. Um, walking is just the best, all right? And, as, and you, if you can't, if you haven't been walking, you gotta start out slow and then you work up and to get into the power walking. That's the 
best for your for your bones as well because that actually is you know it's got some weight bearing going on to it you do need to have some weights going in there they don't have to be super you know 50 pound all that kind of stuff okay it doesn't have to be that they just need to be weight bearing okay weight bearing exercises um, that you're going on there I only work out now uh, three to four days a week um, as opposed to my six or seven that I did before um, I'm actually able to you know uh, well I've gained the, the weight so I'm getting that off but I was actually able to maintain that for five years all right almost five years um, dialing it down so I know it sounds strange but you know as you start these hormonal shifts and going through the perimenopause and the menopause you really do need to pay attention to your body it's really important that you pay attention to your body and if you're not paying attention to your body then you won't know what's going on um, so I want you to, to think about this okay think about you know what is it that I can do um, what plan do I want to start because you have to be consistent with it this is the other thing don't don't exercise and then not exercise and then exercise and not exercise it really needs to be consistent along with that nutritional plan it has to be consistent okay that way you see the changes if you're making journals okay and, and watching what's going on you'll see the consistent changes so I hope that this has really helped you and I and if you have any questions whatsoever about menopause perimenopause um, nutrition um, exercise any of those things I would love to chat with you so um, you can always find me at susanarhowski.com and I will see you next time see ya